good. We honor you. We adore you, Lord. Thank you for being here with us. God, thank you that we get to come together as family and worship you. There is nothing better than being in the family of God and in your presence. Thank you, Crystal. That is awesome. So here's what we want to do. We're going to pray. We're a house of prayer. And so, Father, we're going to come before you. We're going to lift some things. If you'd like to have a seat, and then as we're going through, raise your hand as God puts something on your heart. Father, so good. Thank you, Lord. So we're called a house of prayer, and you know what? We've also seen God do amazing, miraculous things, and we want to hear about some of those testimonies. But for right now, let's lift things to the Lord. Father. God, your kindness is so good. You know, today we are also honoring fathers. He's our Heavenly Father, but all the dads and grandpas, could you please stand for a moment? We just want to honor you. All the way up. Here you go. Yes. <laughs> stand. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for stepping in to the life that God's called you for. And, Father, we just want to bless the fathers, the grandfathers, whether they're biological dads or they've stepped into that role in someone's life, other people's lives, Lord, and they've been the gap stander. Father, you put the solitary in families, and you have given these men and so many others your heart to love well and to lead well and to walk a life that leaves a legacy that empowers their children and their grandchildren, and all of those that you bring into their lives. Father, we thank you, and God, we bless them. We ask your blessing over them, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Lord, let them understand and see the fruit of their life the way that you see it for generations. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you, gentlemen. Have a seat. God is so good. And there's going to be a time... In every, I believe, in every man's life where you're going to have a, a moment and God's going to allow you to see the effect that you've had on the generations and that there's things that you've spoken into people's lives in places where you have stood that has changed their life radically. And it's your legacy. It's your legacy. It's happening now and it will continue. So thank you for that. Good morning, family. It's good to see you. Okay, so let's pray for some stuff as incense rising. So um, some of the things we've been continuing to pray about, and oh my goodness, we've been hearing story after story of answered prayer, and we want to give time for that as well. Uh, we want to pray for the lost, right? For those that have, I like your hair, <laughs> for those that have lost their way, They've once been at a relationship with the Lord, and they're making their way home. Every week, we're, we're learning about more and more people that the Lord is touching their heart and drawing them to him. And we're so excited. It's about that. So, Father, we just want to lift up that. Is there anything else that people here you have on your heart? You can. These lights are super bright. Could you turn them down just a little bit? Or I'll just squint. It's good. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We'll pray for her. Okay. Okay. Let's pray for that family for sure. Thank you. So we're going to pray for that. And you know, the Lord is here with us. What? Addictions. Breaking addictions. Oh, there's some good stories, y'all. You're going to need to hear about. But we just want to pray for addictions, that the Lord will break those in people's lives. Healthy families restored. Anything else? Yes. 
diseases of the brain. Yes, diseases of the brain, as well as every mental health issue, mental health in, and loneliness. These are huge things. Thank you. More? Want to pray for provision. God says any situation or need that we bring to the throne and we invite him into, it changes everything. Yes. A double mastectomy. Okay. How's she healing? Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll pray for her. Yes. Healing from surgeries. So many things. Family health. We're coming into the summer. Sometimes the enemy can mess with families. And so we just want to pray for the provision of God to flow over every family. Regardless what's happening, if there's difficulties, Father, we pray that just your grace would just be resounding in every family, that relationships would be restored, hearts would be tender. I want to pray for the children of all ages. They are the, it, it's interesting, I keep hearing the word of a Josiah generation, where Josiah saw his name in the book, in the temple, and it called him out. He goes, wait, God has a purpose for me. And it shifted everything. And we want to pray for all of the children so that they would know that their names and their life has purpose and a draw. And there's things that God has for them to do that won't be done unless they connect with God and they move forward in that relationship. So we pray for their salvation in Jesus' name and their excitement about God. Anything else? Okay, so let's take a minute and just close ourselves in with the Lord. So the Lord is here and he hears our prayer requests, and they are vital. And whether we've shared our prayer requests out loud or if there's just something that's God put on your heart, God's put on your heart, I want to take a minute and give room for that. So you can just pray between you and God for a moment right now. I believe he's going to bring faces and situations into your heart, into your mind to intercede for. Let's pray. Father, I pray for each person and situation that you've put on our hearts. Lord, that those that we're praying for would know that they are loved and they are cherished and God has a purpose and a plan for their life that is better than they could ever imagine. We pray for salvations, healing. Lord, you know all of the circumstances that we've shared and the ones that we didn't maybe share out loud. They are no less important. We pray for people that we know at work, at home, people that we run into, people in our lives. Father, we intercede in Jesus' name. We honor you, Lord, in everything we do. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen, I mean, so be it. Yes, hey, family. Oh, we're all together on Sunday. How fun is that? We're excited to have Robbie and Crystal back with us. Hello, and Crystal's got her new do, looking pretty cute. <laughs> so, so welcome home, y'all. Hi, hey, guys. Family coming back. <laughs> so I have just a few announcements, and then we're going to wrap it up. And all the kids are invited to join me and the other teacher leaders that we have over in the fellowship hall when it's time we're going to have some special activities for father's day <laughs> so
So, <laughs> so uh, quick announcements. First of all, if you're new to joining us, then welcome. We are thrilled to have you, whether you're here in person or if you're joining us online, and we would love to connect with you. We have some communication cards, or you can type your prayer requests or needs into our uh, live stream, and we will get those. We want to pray for you. Um, going through our schedule at church, because stuff happens. In every family, stuff happens. Monday night's prayer, prophetic prayer, starts at 5 o'clock, and it's over in the fellowship hall. So celebrate recovery, Friday night starts at 5.30. That includes dinner and child care. It's super fun. It's for pretty much anybody, but I would just encourage you to check that out. Saturday night prayer, we pray a lot here. You may have noticed that. Saturday night's 5 p.m. here. His hands and feet for June. They are going to go and serve lunch today at the Sleep Center. Is that right? This afternoon. And then we have a service project on next weekend, next Saturday. If you're interested in that, connect with the Justs. Stacy's over there waving her hand. It was so fun. If you were here and able to be a part of the uh, vow renewal service last weekend, it was just wonderful. And we had a great celebration also in the reception after that. So that was super cool. Thanks for letting us be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You heard the woman. It's good. All right. So next weekend, so we have Patterson's today. So fun. Next weekend, we have Mitchell Wally coming. And so that's going to be great. And uh, he's also going to be doing worship on that. So that's good. Next weekend, also, we're going to have a potluck right after church, which brings me to one of my clipboards. Because So we haven't done this. This is very old school. But, y'all, sometimes old school's good. So if you are going to be here next week, we're going to have um, a potluck. And I have a sign-up sheet just so that it can be a reminder and let us know the things that are coming and the things that still need to be pursued because we love hanging out together. And, you know, there's nothing like sharing a meal together, breaking fast. In the Bible, that's how the disciples and all the followers of Christ really connected, is they would come and they would break bread together. And there's nothing like sitting around the table and visiting and getting caught up and telling stories of the Lord and just life, walking together. So I have this that's going to be circulating. And then the other thing that I'm super excited about, it's going to be so fun. We have a booth at Fourth of July in the park. I know. We're going to pray for people. We're going to do drawings. We're going to hand out cool stuff. We've got invitations. And it's going to be so much fun. I don't want you to miss out. And for that reason, I've got shifts. <laughs> so if you have not had a chance yet to sign up, it's super easy. Each time, so they're just little two-hour slots starting at 7 a.m. I need some people to help me set up. And so we'll get set up. And then going on from 10 to 12, that one's all filled. Um, 12 to 2, that one's filled. Okay, so we have 2 to 4, and then we have 4 to 6 p.m. And so the 4 to 6 p.m., we're actually going to be uh, breaking down this stuff at 5.30 and putting it all away. So it's not really a long day, but we'd love to have you come. We have cards. We have gifts. We're going to do drawings for Bibles. It's going to be a hoot. So I have these two clipboards, and I'm going to send around. Please pray about it and write your name on there. I'll gather them after service. I think if there's anything else. Does anybody else have an announcement that I missed? No? Okay. I see a wavy hand. Okay. So we have those still up front. Just to remind everybody that we have the two petitions going around to deal with the issues facing our state. Um, and so we have a bill here that has been passed into law without any vote that allows the state of Washington to not tell us where our kids are if they choose to make certain medical choices. And um, that doesn't work for me. And I actually haven't talked with a person that that works for. And I haven't met a parent that would not move heaven and earth to find their child and make sure they're okay. And so... I urge you, please, please sign these. We have a very short window for one of these, and um, this is about our kids, and that's important. Um, also, I just wanted to say that you cannot abbreviate anything on this puppy, or they won't count it. 
So um, if you have any questions, um, let me know. If people online on, or on YouTube are looking for places to sign, this can be found at Hot Mamas, Kelty Auto, Master Auto, Tommy's Dutch Lunch, The Blue, and here at Grace Church. So those are the current locations to sign these. Thank you. Amen. So we want to follow the Lord. And there is something, we're not necessarily political, but we're not, not. And as soon as the things that, um, as soon as politics starts encroaching on what God says is right, according to his word, that's what we stand on. We're not about personalities. We're not about all that sort of stuff. It's just like, what are the issues? And there are certain issues that are absolutely contrary to the word of God. It's not a preference thing. Preference things, you know, whatever. But as soon as it comes against what God says is okay, he's called us to not be voiceless. And I think it's very important. Okay. Anyhow, so right now, if you guys could release the kids to go over to the fellowship hall, we are ready. Bless you guys. Man, I wish adults could get that excited about church. <laughs> I, I, I take that back. I guess there's some that can. Praise God. Well, I wanted to, to challenge Sarah because there are certain things you can abbreviate when you fill that out. For example, Harvest Drive, you only have to put DR. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you a bad time. Because it's not like you don't give me a bad time. Praise God. Whew. You know, I feel like uh, it almost sounds funny to say this, but I feel like God is in a really good mood. And that his favor is here to be released. And I, I just want to share a couple words of knowledge for healing and just release those. Uh, is there anybody here that you've, you've had problems with your left wrist? And when I first began to sense it, it was, it was kind of like an ache. But sometimes it's, it's, it's more than an ache. I don't know. This is me talking, not, not God in a word of knowledge. But I don't know if it's corporal tunnel or something like that. But is there anybody here that has problems with their left wrist? Okay, Dave, how long have you had that? Okay, okay. Are you left-handed? Okay, stand up. Could I have some people just that are around Dave just lay hands on him and pray for him? Father, we thank you that you care about everything in our lives, and nothing is insignificant. And so, Lord, we ask you to touch Dave right now in Jesus' name. Father, we speak health to that wrist. We speak healing, full uh, um, emotion and mobility restored. We command pain, discomfort, inflammation of any kind to leave right now in Jesus' name. Now, just check your wrist and, and, and see how it feels. Uh-huh. Is it more flexible than it was before? Okay. Okay, let's just pray one more time. Can we do that? Father, we thank you for your healing touch. Lord, we ask you to touch Dave, touch this left wrist. We just speak healing. We speak a creative miracle to it right now in Jesus' name. Let, let it be restored fully. Uh, to full motion, to full usability in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for doing that, Father. We bless what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody that has problems in their, in their right hip area? It's kind of in this area, and it, it it's it's like 
you, 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 sometimes when you bend in a certain way, you feel it. Is that you? Is there anybody else? Oftentimes, there's more than one person. Okay. We're going to pray for her. So, uh, ¿cuánto tiempo tienes? You understood what I said? No, no. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm asking, how long have you had this problem? Oh, okay, okay. I need some girl hands. <laughs> now, I, w I want you to sh put your hand where it hurts. Okay, and I want some girl hands to go there. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for your healing touch right now in Jesus' name. We command the pain to go. We command healing to be released. We command uh, just uh, motion. And, and movement to be fully restored in the name of Jesus right now. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Okay, check it. Whatever you need to do, you do. <laughs> she has to do the twist. <clears throat> Can we get some twist music on? How's it, how's it feeling? Is it better? Is there any pain at all? No. Awesome. Praise God. <laughs> God is so good. All right. I'm supposed to do the offering. I almost forgot. Sorry. You know, there, as, as we come to grow in our relationship with the Lord, we begin to realize that when we go to him in prayer, we're not trying to get him to do something that he doesn't want to do. We're not trying to get, you know, get him in a half Nelson and, and get him to do something that we want. Quite the contrary. We're asking him to do the things that he has promised to do, that he wants to do, that he loves to do. I know that God loves to heal people because he did it everywhere Jesus went. Amen. Okay, I'm going to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. I'm really excited about having a booth in the park this year. I think that is going to be so fun to do those very things, to pray for the sick, to, to release words of encouragement into people's lives. So fun. Deuteronomy 8.18, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Powerful verse. I also want to read it out of the New American Standard. But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. You know, it's obvious when one reads the old covenant that part of God's blessing on the people had to do with wealth. It was part of the covenant that he wanted to establish in their life, not for the purpose of selfish gain, but rather so that they could be a greater blessing to others. When I read Deuteronomy chapter 28, it's like I see God wanting to bless everything that they put their hand to, their crops, their, their livestock, their land, everything. But it is prosperity with a purpose, and that purpose to be a blessing to everyone around them. As we give, as we sow into the kingdom, we are acknowledging God as our source. We are acknowledging that the blessing comes from him. We are acknowledging that by giving to him the first fruits of our increase so that our barns will be filled with plenty and our vats will overflow with new wine. There are a number of ways to give. There's a box in the back. You can put your tithes and offerings. But let's stand together as we make a declaration this morning. Lord, as we give today, we are believing you for heaven opened, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, healings, salvations, and divine manifestations, positions, and promotions provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. 
Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessings, and increase upon me so that I will have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Amen. You can be seated. Well, as Mickey has shared, we've got the Pattersons with us today, so I'm going to invite Robbie up to come and, and turn her loose. Can I hear me? Yes. God is good. It is such a blessing to be here. We love you guys. Thank you so much. The, it's a quick update with us. We, we've, we've been involved with ministry since 1999, right after Crystal and I got saved, and the God put the call to ministry on our lives. We just started Christ is King ministry. Crystal and I launched that. It's 501c3, and, and she's getting the website going. She's doing all the cool stuff and uh, things like that. But she's getting it all going, praise God. And we're in a, the reason why we're doing it now is because I'm in a unique position, being the undersheriff at the sheriff's office, being a chaplain. We're getting a lot of invitations to go and speak at places. And it's kind of set a weird dynamic to it where people started wanting to give us money and things. And we've never been in that situation before. So we wanted to set it up, have it done properly and legitimately and everything. And that's why we did that. And, and God is really blessing God is really blessing moving. We just had, uh, they did the All Wheels Weekend, the Dayton Days thing, and I'm walking around there in my uniform, and, and person after person coming up to me that I've arrested, that I've got on warrants, telling me how that their life was right now. It's showing me their kids and, and their wives. and say, I'm so thankful you preached the gospel to me. Man, that's big. That's big, being able to look, and, and some of them, I didn't even recognize them at first. When I saw them, when I arrested them, their faces were sunken in from drug addiction, and I mean, they were in their own filth and everything else, and now it's like a normal person talking to me, healthy and vibrant, bouncing. God, God can, just one word from God can change someone's entire life, can change their entire family. Amen. 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 Happy Father's Day to everyone. Who's a father? Or who has a father? God is good. I'm so thankful all my kids are here. Praise God. I know my daughter just got up and left. She does that when I start. No. She had to go to the bathroom. I'm thankful that you guys are all here. Praise God. I'm so thankful for my dad. My dad, now he didn't get saved until I was, until uh, after I was 16 years old. And, and I know none of our fathers were perfect. Nobody's got it all put together. But uh, he has issues with alcohol and things when I was growing up. But still, even though he had that, he taught me what it was to be a man. He taught me how to work hard. He taught me through example. He always had a job. He always provided and protected the family. And whenever he got born again, whenever I was 16, he finally went to church. And he had told me afterwards, he said he was avoiding it because he knew once he set foot in the door, his life was going to change forever. And it did. He went in that church. He came. He got born again, came home, poured out the Jack Daniels, poured out the beer, threw away the cigarettes and didn't do it anymore. He's talking about a testimony. Somebody who was addicted to that thing came and had an encounter with God and he changed everything. Man, kids need to see that. Adults need to see that. The world needs to see that. Need to see lives and hearts change. Amen. Amen. I want to begin reading to you in 1 John. 1 John, I'm going to re begin reading it. I'm endeavoring to start here and then come back here in the end. But in chapter 3, Beginning at verse 18, 1 John chapter 3, 18, I'm reading in the regular King James. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth, in your actions and in sincerity, in deed and in truth. Verse 19, and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart 
and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemns us not, then we'll be positioned. Then we will have confidence towards God. Verse 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things pleasing in his sight. And this is what he's talking about. I often use this, I'll read it to people, and, and I'll say, what was the thought that came to your mind whenever you read verse 22? And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. And most of the time, the first thing that comes to your mind is Moses. Ten Commandments. If that's what came to your mind, your heart is condemning you and you cannot have confidence towards God. Stay focused. It's going to get better. If that's what came to your mind, then, then your, your mind has not been renewed to your covenant in Jesus Christ. And whenever you go to reach out in faith and receive what has been provided by grace through the cross of Calvary, there's going to be a hump. Uh, a hindrance there because you know you don't deserve it. I'm so glad he added in verse 23, and this is his commandment. This is what he's speaking of. This is the commandment. I'm going to keep this commandment, and when I have this settled and established in my heart, I will have a confidence towards God that I can ask and receive of him. And this is his commandment, that you would believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another the way he commanded us to, not the way the culture around us tells us to. Whenever we see this, once we have this established in our hearts, in our minds, that I have received Jesus Christ, I am believing on him, not just for go to heaven when I die. I'm believing on Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. I'm believing on Jesus Christ as he's going to keep going here. Verse 24 and as, as he has given us commandment, verse 24, and he that keepeth his commandments dwell in him. I'm established in that, that I'm living in Christ, dwelleth in him, and he in me, and hereby we know that he abideth in us, that the Spirit, capital S, which he has given us, by the Spirit, which he has given us, by the Holy Spirit, that he's given us. You see, you begin to have this confidence. You begin to have this, as he says here, we have confidence towards God. We have this confidence towards God with asking and receiving. We have this confidence towards God that I'm living in him and he's living in me. Now, like I said, I don't want to blow everything off right here. I want to come back to this at the end, but I want to read another portion in the New Living Translation. In Acts chapter 16, and I want to read 6 through 10 in the New Living Translation. And next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Now, I want you to get this in your mind. Are these men called of God? Absolutely. Absolutely. They're called, commissioned, ordained of God. But look at what they're doing. They knew the call of God on their lives, and they started going. They didn't just stay after they were anointed and hands were laid on them, after they received Christ, after they were established that just what John is writing in 1 John that they believed on Jesus and they loved the brethren, that they understood that Christ was in them and they were in Christ. They didn't just sit there and say, now God, give me more direction. They started going. And, and, and what you'll see is as they went, as he points out there, they would start going into a, a region and God would say, no, not there. But they wouldn't stop and say, let's have a six-hour prayer meeting, guys. They would start to go into an area, not here, boom, like a pinball, poof, and they'd go into another area. And the Holy Spirit would say, no, not there. Boom, like a pinball, start going, up. no, not there. I want to continue reading this portion. And the Holy Spirit preventing them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time, verse 7. And then coming to the borders of Misha, they headed north for the province of Bithia. But again, 
The spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they started headed another direction. They went through Misha to the seaport of Troas. And in that going, in that moving, in them understanding the call, the first call, go into all the world. In them understanding the first commission, go make disciples of nations. In them understanding that they were called out from the world, called out from sin, called out the church. In that going was where the direction came. And verse 9 says, and that night... That night, after going and attempting and the Spirit of God saying, no, not there. After them going and the Spirit of God saying, no, not there either. And the Spirit of God saying, no, not there either. And that night, Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in northern Greece was standing there and pleading with them, come over to Macedonia and help us. Come over to Macedonia and help us. The call of God on your life. You say, well, I'm not not an evangelist. We are all called to do the work of an evangelist. You are the church. You are called out from among them to be separate. You have a call and you have an anointing on your life. The call of God is is in response to the cry of those hurting. Your call. God is calling you because people are crying out to him. And his heart is being pierced by the cries of people who are saying, why won't you do something, God? Why won't you move in my life? And his answer to that is you. His answer to that is he is going to come live inside of you by way of the Holy Spirit. And then he's going to say, you, you go. And you lay hands on them and see them healed. You go declare my message of peace between God and man. You go share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. You go mend up the brokenhearted. That is going to be God's answer over and over again. And for a large part of my life, I didn't understand that. I didn't really start seeing that the way I'm saying it now until... I started entering in the law enforcement and I started realizing how much bad stuff is going on behind closed doors. People that you see in the grocery store and they smile and they wave. People that you meet as you're going around and they are about to kill themselves. People that you wouldn't know it by talking with them. How's your day been? My day's been fine. We went fishing last week. We did this. And you don't know that they are a total mess inside. Everything inside of them is decayed and dead. And now they want to hang themselves. They want to OD on drugs. They want to kill themselves. They don't see the, the value in living even one more day. You don't know that. And if I will not answer the call of God to step out and share the life of God and the love of Jesus Christ with them, where's the answer going to come from? Where's the answer going to come from? The area that you're at, the neighborhood you're in, the job that you're on, God has placed you there and positioned you there to be salt and light. He's put you there. And, And what? I know that I've been guilty of it. I know that many people I've met met have been guilty of it because it's so good to come and learn in church. Man, that's why we started coming to Grace. Pastor Dave, he teaches so good. We know he's not going to back up from the Word of God. We know he's going to give you the truth of God's Word. You know he's going to be moved by the Holy Spirit, but there is a trap there. There's a danger, and I will get so used to just letting him do it and me being the the one receiving it. And, oh, it feels so good, and I got blessed. I got touched. I got an understanding of that Scripture I didn't have before, and then I didn't do anything with it. He gave it to me. I had that time where I saw that lady be healed in her hips so that now I will have a boldness, a confidence, an understanding. So now I'll go out and I'll see somebody, oh, you've got this problem? You be healed in the name of Jesus. 
I, I received that. I walk in that. You were a witness of that so that I can go and carry that same truth to someone else. And man, I don't know how I missed it. I don't know how I couldn't see that. And I would get used to just coming and sitting in a building, praising God, good praise and worship, hearing a great gospel message. And, and something started stirring inside of me whenever I started having to go to these calls and I'm seeing these people who are broken, who are hurting, and, and it's real then. Oh man, it's real. Whenever somebody calls 911, they had just had the worst time of their life. And it's real then. And you go and you talk to these people who are broken, who are sad, who are hurting, and there's not another answer for them. Oh, let me call this counselor. Let me call this person for you. There is not another answer for them. It is faith in the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Whenever these men started going out, they knew the call of God to go into all the world. They felt that call, but then this Macedonian call came. Someone there got serious with God in that region. Now, we know what happens whenever Paul goes there. He first meets this woman named Lydia, who believes the gospel and becomes a great help to his ministry later on. And then you see later on the demon-possessed girl. Satan sends his people to hinder the work of God everywhere you go. And she starts coming up and following the Apostle Paul around and saying, these are men of God come to show us the way of salvation. She wasn't lying. She was telling the truth. But the Apostle Paul could not allow that demonic spirit to be associated with the Holy Spirit. Now, now that, that's, that's not what I'm teaching on now, but that's actually a, a, a very unique portion. There's only two passages in Scripture where a demon is cast out of somebody and there's, there's no real uh, indication that the person wanted it out. The first one is in Luke chapter 4 where Jesus goes into the synagogue because God called him to go in there and preach the gospel, go in there and preach his word. And as Jesus is in there preaching in the synagogue, this man stands up and starts screaming, interrupting him from going in and doing what God told him to do. Jesus didn't stand there and have a conversation with him, didn't chit-chat with that guy. What did he do? He told him to hold his peace and get out. And the demon threw the man in the floor. And then the man got up and all the people stopped and said, what authority is this? Even the demons obey his voice. Amen. This is the other situation. It doesn't, there's no uh, anything saying that this girl wanted to be relieved from this demon. That it said that her, her masters were making money off of her. They got mad later on because she didn't have this power of divination anymore. And it caused a riot. He gets, it caused all kinds of problems in Paul's life. But what people miss is what was the next thing that happened? The Philippian jailer got saved. This man cries out whenever there's an earthquake there and the doors are opened up and he starts to kill himself with a sword thinking that he allowed a prisoner to escape and the penalty was death. And then Paul cries out to him, no, 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 stay your sword, don't kill yourself, we're all here. And the man comes and says, what do I need to do to be saved? And he tells them to believe on this Jesus Christ. You see, the call of God that he has, whenever God is, is whispering to your heart, it's because somebody is crying out to him. Get that, get that instilled in your mind. Whenever you feel the tug of God on your heart to go here to witness to that person, somebody is tugging on God's heart. And the grace is there. But see, we end up looking at the outward so much. And I've seen to where, where I felt the, the tug of God on, on my heart. Some teenager who's wearing all goth or doing all this stuff, you need to witness to them. And the first thing I think is they don't want to hear it. They're, they're wearing Satan worship and stuff. I know they don't want to hear it. But whenever I've acted in faith and obeyed the voice of God, oh man, they would be so tender. Not me. Now, now I have had times where I didn't have a tug on my heart. I thought, man, let me go share the gospel with this lady. Bam! And it did not have the response I thought it would. 
But oh man, in those times where it was that Macedonian call, those times when I felt the tug of God, it didn't matter what they looked like, what I thought about them. If I would go and share the truth in love, there was always that response. We we're like, I've been praying. I've been, I, I actually asked God to show me that he was real. You see, the, the call of God on your life that is in response to this lost and dying world, that's actually how we grow. As I answer that, as I start obeying the Holy Spirit, because I, I've had times where there are times where you just need to study and you need to get in and you need to pray and you need to fast and you need to have this time with God because without that encounter with the king, you'll never know the power of the kingdom. There are those times. But oh man, there's times where I was, I was obese in the spirit. I was obese on the word. I was gorging on the word for so long and it was never flowing out of me. I was, I was studying about spiritual gifts but never acting out and walking out the gifts of the spirit. And many, many people in churches, their education has far exceeded their obedience. They are way more educated. They want to, and they'll even look at people. Oh, well, you see the way Pastor Dave prayed for that guy? Well, I think you should have prayed this way. And you know I would have done it this way. Because how many people have you prayed for and seen that happen? Well, none. But I know a guy. And, 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 and that's serious, though. And many people, even though that doesn't get vocalized a lot, people are thinking that. People are thinking that. And, and they'll, they'll look out at the people who are doing it. Because you can find fault in everybody. You can find something wrong with everything and everybody and they look at the ones who are doing it and say, well, he should do it this way. She should do it that way. Whenever in reality it comes down to that's just a diversion tactic because I know that I'm not doing it. I know that I'm not living it out to the full. I know that I am not running this race as hard as I could. I know that I haven't laid down everything Every weight and the sin that so easily besets us and gets us off track and the things that sidetracks us. But, but those, those mind battles that we play, especially in this world as it's getting darker, those mind battles that we're playing as we get our hearts and our minds renewed to the things of God, you'll look back and say, man, that, that was ignorant. Oh, my, why, was I, why did I think that way? That also gives you to where you can have grace on the people who are thinking that way now. You can look at somebody else and say, like, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I, say, I say, I've been there. But as we look out and this world is getting darker, there has never been a better time to preach the gospel. Yeah. And, and I, I've talked to Crystal about this, and I was, I was talking to some others about this. I was like, it, it seems like it's so easy for people to get saved now. I mean, I mean you think about it. If, I mean, I don't watch the news and everything, but it's obvious a lot of people are. It's obvious that a lot of people are not getting their understanding of Jesus and the Bible from Jesus or the Bible. They're getting their understanding of those things from whatever the media tells them. And that has become people's religions now. That is the religion of America that, that's the most vast one in churches and in unchurched people. The media. And that's where they get their views on, on politics. That's where they get their views on things that are happening. How should I feel about this subject? Let me see what CNN says. Okay, I've got it now. Let me see what the person on Facebook said. Okay, okay, now I know how I should feel about it. Instead of them leaning into the Holy Spirit, God, what should my response to this be? Instead of them standing firm on God's word, they have a religion of the world and they're getting the world's result. And it's evident now. It was able to go under the radar for years and years and years happening. But now it's bubbled up to the top. And now it's running the society. And, and we look at it and say it's crazy. That's the number one thing you say is, this is crazy. Who would pass a law like what the sister was talking about? Who would, that's crazy. But it's not crazy. It's strategic. It's demonic, but it's not crazy. They are strategically setting up things that are against God and against the will of God and against the word of God. 
because they know that that's the tactics they have to use, these carnal tactics and things, because whenever they realize, whenever the church realizes that we're the ones who have the authority of the name of Jesus, whenever the church realizes, and more people are waking up to that now, more people are coming to that realization now, and, 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 and then they're beginning to look around and realize this is so dark and so bad, I wish there was an answer. And then people are standing up and saying, there is an answer. Faith in the name of Jesus. There is an answer. Standing in obedience to God's word, loving what God loves and hating what God hates. There is an answer. And then the cry starts bubbling up inside of you. God, use me. God, use me. And I love to use that phrase. I mean, I've probably said that thousands of times. Use me. God, use me. I like what one of the, I want to, I want to say it's Tozer, one of the, the old Bible preachers had put out, don't, don't pray for God to use you, but pray that God would make you what is usable. And that's powerful. But in reality, I use that to sidestep the truth of God for a long time. This is not a confession service. I'm, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. I use that to sidestep the things of God for a long time because I would say, God, make me usable. God, use me. Because in reality, he wants to anoint you. That's what he wants to do. He calls people. He anoints people. He works with people. But he doesn't use people. When he used the word use, we think about something that's disposable. I used my car to get here. I used the tissue. Didn't have great value. But you are not expendable in the eyes of God. You're not fodder for a cannon in the eyes of God. You're not a projectile in his arsenal that he's going to send out in the eyes of God. You're his child. He desires to dwell in you. He desires to live in you. You, you right here, the people sitting in these chairs, in eternity future, you are going to be to the praises of Jesus Christ in glory. You right here. The, the Old Testament saints and others are going to come to you and say, tell me what it was like to be a child of God in the earth. They were servants of God. They could have the Holy Spirit of God come upon them temporarily and be used of God for a time. But you're in a position to where, as 1 John would say, that he loves us so much that he calls us his children. You're in a position to where you can confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you are saved. You're in a position to where you can be recreated on the inside and be made a new creature, a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's you. You can be a child of God right here, right now. You can be the temple of God in the earth, his dwelling place in this earth. And in eternity future, they're going to come to you and ask you, tell me what it was like. Tell me what it was like to be one who had the spirit in them and upon them. Tell me what it was like to be led by the Holy Spirit. Tell me what it was like to be able to stand in the middle of a lost, dying, and decaying world and say, Christ in me is the hope of glory. Amen. And oh man, there was a time in my life where I would have had to say, uh, well, you know, I played it safe. I don't know. They, I would have got fired if I would have did that where I was at. You know, I mean, it was dangerous where I was at. Oh man, don't let that be me, God. That will not be me. That will not be me. And I'm standing in faith that there are a lot of people, and that's what they're saying. That's what the Spirit of God is calling out to their heart because the cries of the people in this nation, in this world, the cries are getting so loud, and God's ear is not deaf that he can't hear. He has sent the Deliverer, Jesus Christ. And now you go by his name. I'm a Christian, and I am here in the authority of the name of Jesus. Whenever we think about this call, and we think about how big it is, and what a privilege it is. When we think about that, don't allow the cares of this world to get you to back down. Don't allow how dark it looks to get you to back down. 
the reality is the darker it gets, the less you really have to shine. And that's a weird way of looking at it. But oh man, you can just halfway be a Christian in a dark, deceitful, devil-worshiping place and you will shine like a light before men. But what about if you are being totally sold out to God? What about whenever you get it to where you've, you've already received him into your heart and now you've refused to be conformed to the world, but you are transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you start showing forth to the world around you what is the good and perfect will of God. That's what they're waiting on. That's what they're longing for. They don't know that's what they're crying out for. The addict doesn't know that that's what he's crying out for whenever he's saying, God, help me. The prostitute doesn't know that's what she's crying out for when she's crying out, God, help me, I can't escape. The suicidal person doesn't know. They don't know that this answer has already come in Jesus Christ and you've got the answer. But more people are waking up. More people are seeing that now. And that Macedonian call, the same way that he had it, you start going and you're going expecting that they are going to receive this word, that it's going to bring the salvation that God has ordained it to bring. You're going in faith, believing that you know Jesus Christ, that he's living in you and you're living in him. You're going knowing that I have this love and this fellowship with the other believers. You're going with this understanding that even if my heart condemns me, God is greater than my heart. And you're going with this confidence towards God. That portion that I started out reading to you in 1 John, as he keeps going there, because remember there were no chapter breaks in the original letter. Verse 23 again of 1 John chapter 3, verse 23. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another. If you have not done that, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have not believed on him, the word believe means to place all of your hope and all of your trust Stand ready to receive all of your good from believe on the name of Jesus Christ. If you have not done that, today's the day. The second part of that where he says, and love one another, if you know, you know if you've let your, your love grow dull. If you have not been walking in love towards the brethren, if you've allowed bitterness and hate, and strife between you and the other people, the other people in the church, then it, you need to turn from that now. Believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwells in him. You see this place, this secret place to where I'm living in Christ because I have right relationship with God and right relationships with people and it causes this, this, this sweet dwelling, this abiding in him, dwelleth in him and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he has given us. And then it goes into chapter four, beloved, believe not every spirit. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hereby know ye that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ cometh in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard, it should come, and even now already it's in the world. Verse 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. When it comes to that trying of the spirits, I want to read that, that verse in the Living Bible. He said that this way, 1 John chapter 4, I'm going to read 1 through 3 in the Living Bible. Dearly loved friends, don't always believe everything you hear just because someone says it's a message from God. 
Test it first to see if it really is. For there are many false teachers around. Verse 2. And the way you find out if their message is from the Holy Spirit is to ask. Don't ask them. You're reasoning this in yourself with what you know of God. Is to ask, does what this guy's saying, does it really agree that Jesus Christ, God's Son, actually became a man with a human body? And I recall reading that for years and thinking, how could that be the test? How could that be the test? The reason is because there are a lot of modern teachers, teachings that oppose the view that Jesus did what he did, anointed of the Holy Spirit. There are a lot of people who will look to that and they'll admire Jesus. They'll tell you to admire Jesus. But then they'll say, you can't walk in it though. He did that because he's God. And if someone is teaching something, no matter how good it sounds, if it, does not to re, if it does not relate over to you go do what Jesus did, if it cannot translate over to you go live like Jesus, you go be salt and light, you go bring Christ to them, if it does not translate over to that, it is the spirit of Antichrist against Christ, in the place of Christ, not the spirit of Christ. That's big. A lot of the teachings that I heard growing up went against that. They would, they would teach against praying for the sick. They would teach going out and reaching the lost in that way because, you know, maybe God wants them to go to hell. You just never know what God's going to do. That's the teaching of Antichrist. That is not against, that is not with Christ. Does not really agree that Jesus Christ, God's Son, actually became a man with a human body if so, then the message, if so, the message is from God. If not, the message is not from God. But from whom is against Christ? If the Antichrist, whom you have heard about, is going to come, and his attitude of enmity against Christ is already abroad in the world, and we see that. That spirit of Antichrist is already in the world, has already inundated a lot of people, but the message of Christ. The message that we read there in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That message is not lost. And that message is needed now more than it's ever been needed. I want to ask you to stand with me for a moment, if you will. A lot of modern teaching is against this truth that Jesus operated as a sin-free man, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and that's not God. Whenever you realize that he was there living out his life, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and we realize what he was meaning in Acts chapter 10 when it says God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And we see, man, that is the template for your life. That is the blueprint for the Christian life. Christ is in you. You're in Christ. Carrying this word out being directed by the Holy Spirit. It is getting easier and easier. I know a lot of the message of, of the world right now is saying it's getting so hard to serve the Lord. No, it's getting easier to serve the Lord. It's getting to where evil is getting so obvious that you know, <laughs> that's wrong. We don't have to, I don't have to sit there and study out that. Like, nope, that is not of God. Man, you can, you can look up what certain people say about it and um, immediately turn. wait a minute, these people are totally for Satan and they like that. I don't like it. It's getting easier to serve God. But as we start engaging the darkness, as we start engaging the enemy and our light shine, it's not supposed to be like a, like a battle to go in and drive them out. 
It's not a battle with flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The principalities and, and powers of darkness that are there. Man, once I have this, this revelation and this understanding brought to me of the reality of who Christ is, and greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, it is supposed to be like flipping on the light switch. It is supposed to be like now there's a torch in the room and the darkness gets away from it. Oh, yes, the enemy's going to try. The enemy's going to come. The enemy's going to do whatever the enemy does. But we're not reactive to what they're doing. Right now, it may seem that way. But I'm telling you, we're gaining ground. More and more people are receiving Christ. Like Sister Mickey was pointing out there, more and more people are coming to Christ. More people are being saved, healed, set free, empowered by the Holy Spirit. More people are being delivered. And oh man, I've got to stop and I've got to start praying. I've got to say, God, you've been equipping me for all these years. You've been giving me your word. I've been seeing people healed. I've been seeing people touched. You've been equipping me for all these years. I'm going to start going this way, God. Oh, that's not the way. All right, I'm going this way, then God. That's not the way. I'm going this way, then God. Amen. You're going to keep pushing. And I'm telling you, you'll start feeling those tugs of God on your heart. You will get those Macedonian calls. You will have those encounters with God that change you forever and then change the ones you are called to forever. And I want to ask you to pray into that with me. I'd pointed out that first portion. If you do not know Jesus Christ, we need to get that right now. Amen. If you know that you've allowed bitterness and envy and strife between you and someone else, we need to fix that now. Peter pointed out if you allow that, it will hinder your prayers. And I'm telling you, you do not want to be in enemy territory with hindered prayers. And I want to ask you to stand in faith with me that we would be more tender to those calls of God, to those tugs on our heart from God, to where we will see this as someone crying out to God. Even though it doesn't look like that, we do not judge by the natural. We don't judge by the outward. And those cries that people are giving at night and they're calling out to God, be ready to answer those. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace and we receive it right now, God. Father, if there are those who do not know Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins, Father, I'm praying, Lord, that you will break their heart. That right now they would call on the name of the Lord. And they would confess Jesus is Lord. Believe in their heart that God has raised him from the dead. That he's, he's not a, a dead prophet. That he is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. That he's right here with us right now. And then as he's standing at the door of their heart knocking, they would let him in. Father, we're standing in faith that anybody who has allowed bitterness, envy, strife, any of the works of the flesh, any of the works of Satan to get between them and another person, that they would see the call of God on their life and the ability to thrive in the anointing as more important than some perceived hurt. And that right now they would on purpose forgive. And before they lay that offering at the altar, that they would go and make it right with their brother, and then they would come back and worship God. Amen. And Father, we speak into this anointing, to this call, that it would increase on every person in this room, every person listening online. that their hearts would be broken for what breaks your heart. That they would look around and ask themselves, is what I'm living for worth Jesus dying for? Is what I'm spending my life on worth Jesus giving his life for? 
And then the love of God that would fill them would overflow and go out and reach the one. That the love of God would fill us all and overflow. And that we would reach out to those who are hurting. We would reach out to those who are lost. Father, we thank you for this privilege to be here. To be in this world at this time, at this place. Where, where darkness truly thinks that they're getting some upper hand. Father, thank you for allowing us to be here. Now grant your servants all boldness that we will proclaim your word and that we'll stand in faith as you extend your hand in the miraculous. Father, we thank you for the privilege. And Father, we are standing in faith that one day in glory that we will be able to look at those around us and actually give glory, worship, and honor to God for sending Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We refuse to neglect so great a salvation as this. And we stand ready like runners on the line hastening your call. We thank you for this privilege, God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 How many of you received something from God today? Yes, Pastor Davidson. Thank you. Amen. Good stuff. Praise the Lord. You know, it, it, it really is an exciting time that we're living in. We don't have to be afraid of, of what the enemy is doing, the things that are happening in the earth. They actually should get us excited. You know, I, I, the last probably two and a half years, God keeps bringing me back to Isaiah 60. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That's talking about the body of Christ in the earth today. We are living in a time where it's not about the great man of God or the great woman of God. It's about the great body of Christ coming alive in the earth. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But see, light shines so bright in the midst of darkness. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Then he begins to describe what that's going to look like in the earth and, and, and the influence of the kingdom being here. You know, today is Father's Day, and we, we honor fathers. You know, I, I know people that, that didn't have a father. I know people that had a pretty good dad, like me. I had a, I had a pretty good dad. Most of you knew him. Some of us have had experienced different things like that. But you know what the beauty is? We can all know, and this is what Robbie was pointing us towards, we can all have a, our Heavenly Father. And see, God sets the solitary in families. He is a father to the fatherless. And so, Lord, we just want to honor you on Father's Day and say thank you for being our daddy. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father and, and, and showing us what, what a Father's love is really like and showing us what a Father's care is really like. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite the prayer people to come forward this morning to be able to pray. And, uh, and Robbie and Crystal also to come forward and, and be able to pray with people. And if you need prayer for anything, uh, if it relates to something that Robbie was talking about in the message or if it was something else that you came, came to church with today that you need prayer for, then I just want to encourage you to come and receive prayer. God bless you, saints. Have a great, great week.